we know that when metals and non-metals react, they have a tendency to transfer electrons. Basically, metals have lost shell that has one, two, or three electrons. And non-metals have four, five, six, seven, and even eight electrons. Now, the important number here is eight. If anything has eight electrons in the lost shell, we call that octet. And this is what makes it stable. So octet is what we call stable electronic configuration. This is where atoms have complete shell and that is what they want to achieve. Now metals, we usually have one, two or three. And non-metals, they usually have all the way from four to eight. Now the ones that have eight are already stable. We call them noble gases. But the rest of them, they need to make eight somehow. Now, as is evident, if they were to gain electrons, they can easily become eight because they are very close to eight. So seven can get one and make eight, six can get two more, five can get three more, and four, the electrons with, the atoms with four electrons in the large shell can make gain four. But non-metals will have to spend a lot of energy to gain those electrons. So what they try to do is that they make it zero. So metals try to lose electrons and by doing that, this will lose one, these will lose two, and these will lose three electrons. And that is how they will all go to zero or eight. And that is where they become stable. So what happens is that metals lose electrons. So metals lose electrons, or we can also say they donate electrons. And non-metals gain electrons, or we say they accept electrons. And this process, when metal loses electrons and non-metal gains electrons, it obviously changes the charge on the atom. So instead of having a neutral atom, it will be a positive one if it loses electron and will be a negative one if it gains electrons. So when metals lose electrons, they become positive because they have lost negative charge and that we call a cation. So from atom, they change to cation. And non-metals, when they gain electrons, they become negative and we call that anion because they have gained electrons, they're more negative now. And as you know, there's going to be a very strong attraction between positive and negative. There's a strong attraction and this attraction is called ionic bond because it's the bond, the strong force of attraction between ions. And that's called ionic bond. So if I were to define it, then ionic bond is force of attraction between positive ions and negative ions. We can also say between cations and anions. And again, how is it formed? When metals lose electrons and non-metals gain electrons. So let's take an example. Let's suppose we have sodium and sodium has 11 protons, which means it has 11 electrons and the configuration becomes two, eight, one. Now this one electron in the last shell, it wants to lose it so it can become two, eight. And that's what it does. It changes to sodium ion plus an electron. So this ion has the configuration of 2, 8 because this last electron has been lost and it is stable. Its last shell has now 8 or the one that had 1 has already become 0. Now let's suppose I already had some fluorine in there and fluorine is 2, 7. It wants to make it 8 and it needs to gain one electron for that. So fluorine atom can gain an electron and make what we call fluoride ion and this one has the conviction of 2, 8. So this one and that one, they are exactly like a noble gas configuration. And that is how they're stable. And because sodium ions are positive and fluoride ions are negative, they're going to attract each other. So every sodium ion will be attracted by fluoride ion on six sides. So there'll be fluoride ions above and below, to the right and to the left, and behind and in the front. So there's going to be 
this lattice that this is going to form. There is going to be a network. Similarly, every fluoride ion will be attracted to sodium ions on the left and on the right, at the back, in the front, at the bottom, and at the top. So you can clearly see that there's going to be a huge number of these electrons transferred and then all the positive ions and all the negative ions are going to attract each other and they're going to basically form this lattice. And if I were to just zoom out and do it for billions and billions of them, I will see that they basically form what we call ionic lattice. This is a network, a rigid structure, a rigid network of oppositely charged ions. So one example of that is sodium fluoride. So how that works is that I have sodium ion attracted to fluoride ion, then alternating with fluoride and sodium. And you can see that no two positive ions can attack each other and no two negative ions can attract each other. They'll repel each other. So they arrange themselves in this pattern so that they alternate. And each one is attracting each other one. In the exam, they will not ask you to draw this structure, but they can give you the structure and ask you questions about this structure. First of all, you know that this is strong force. This solid line is the bond. This is the bond. And this is strong force of attraction between positive and negative ion. Secondly, judging by this, you can clearly see that they're all rigidly placed in their position. There is very little room for movement because the forces are strong, which means ionic compounds hard, gives them high melting point because you need to break strong forces to basically melt it or boil it. And thirdly, because ions are not free, they cannot conduct. So they are bad conductors. But if I were to break the lattice, these ions will then be free. And because they're ions, they have charges on them. They can carry energy and flow, which is why they make good electrolytes. They're good conductors. When you melt them or make a solution from them. And all of these properties are coming from ionic bond. So if I were to summarize this, I can see that they have, they're hard, they have high melting point because there is strong forces that you need high energy to break. They're bad conductors because ions are not free and they're good conductors when it's molten because ions are free. And that is how ionic compounds are made, they behave and their properties.